old dude here said he wanted two tail lights with turn signals and he wants the four speed with a brand new clutch. Well, whatever dude wants, dude gets. Oh, dude here, <laughs> he's pretty demanding. Now, I normally give him what he wants. He's going to get his two tail lights and his four speed with a new clutch, but we got to do something else first. Y'all remember when I put the timing chain on it here a few weeks ago and, uh, you know, I had to put another timing chain cover on it, drop the oil pan and all that. Well, we got a pretty bad leak. Oil leak, that is. And I'm pretty sure it's that front oil pan seal. I don't think it's the main front main i don't think it's the timing chain cover i'm pretty sure it's the oil pan i don't really know why because you know i put a gob of rtv on each corner uh i haven't looked at it real close but i'm pretty sure that's where it's at so let's get her jacked up and we may fire it up and just see if we can see it dripping never know it normally only does it under load and let me tell you you know the big hole in the floorboard she'll roll smoke in there pretty bad uh and i like to run it out of oil well i did run it out of oil old lifters boy they got the clacking carrying on thought i done blew it up uh what we may end up doing is just dropping the whole oil pan like i should have done in the beginning put new seals front and back and uh, just you know be done with it get the jack man come on come on dude get the jack got my lightweight jack back it was being occupied out there in the woods it's a little bit lighter than that other one. Oh yeah it's a little bit lighter Well, I got her jacked up. Let me show y'all what I have found. There's a little bit of evidence of oil on this timing chain cover coming from the, the main seal, but I don't think that's where the majority of it's coming from. If you look right here in between the silver part and red part, this is, you know, the timing chain cover, the red part's the oil pan. Well, you see all that shiny in there? Well, let me see if I can get you up a little closer. See all that shiny right in there? That's where it's coming from. It's, it's not coming from, you know, either end. Uh, it's just leaking around that gasket. I don't understand why. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go fire it up. Well, I'm gonna wipe all this off first. I'm gonna go fire it up and let's just see if we can see it dripping because it's, it's a pretty good leak. We should be able to see it. Well, I can't find no major oil leak, but I will show you this. Uh, it goes back to my original theory. This motor is wore completely out. I got a lot of oil up here, well, from the breather all the way down. I've looked on the back of the intake, nothing leaking. I've revved it up and revved it up. There's no oil coming from the oil pan. Uh, we know it's leaking, but it, I don't think it's as big a leak as I thought. Um, let me show you this. The only way I can show you is get the, this, this flashlight in here. See that smoke in front of that flashlight? That's coming from right here. The thing is wore out. It is actually burning that much oil. What I don't understand is why it ain't smoking out the tailpipe. I don't understand that. But uh, yeah, she got a lot of blow by. This was just wore out. All right, we're back up under it, and as you can see, I wiped this whole pan off. There ain't nary a bit of oil nowhere dripping. Now, it, you know, it may leak a little worse when it's under load due to, you know, blow by crankcase pressure. But I don't, I don't think that's where my smoke's coming from in the cab, and I don't think that's where my oil's going. I think the sucker is just, just, just wore out. 
when it won't even hold itself on an incline, just a small incline, the old motor's wore out. Tell you what we might do once it uh, cools off, we might do a compression check on it, just, you know, just for giggles, see where it's at. I got all the plugs pulled out and there's definitely evidence of oil burning. I mean, it's not super duper bad, but it's there. Uh, that in there's probably the worst and it's, it's on its way to actually fouling out. But yes, there is evidence of oil burning. Uh, anyway, I have got the first cylinder hooked up to my gauge or my gauge hooked up to the first cylinder. I guess is how you should say it. Anyway, I left my trigger well there. Let me go get it and we'll start doing a compression test. All righty, here we go. Well, I can't see that because of the glare, but it's at 150. Well, probably 145 actually. All right, here's the next cylinder. That is approximately 155 or so. Here is cylinder five. This is the uh, one that had the worst looking spark plug as far as oil uh, burning goes. Let's see what it looks like. That looks like approximately 150. Here is numeral seven cylinder. It finally made it to 150. All right, we are now on the passenger side. And uh, well, I just noticed this right here. This is my PCV valve and it's not hooked up. I remember now when we changed this intake, I did not hook this up. So if I hook this up, that might take care of the smoke getting in the cab, maybe. It's, it's worth a try hooking it up. Anyway, I got it hooked up to cylinder two. Let us see what we get. Oh, she's way on up there, about, about 175, maybe 180. All right, here is cylinder number four. About 150 like the red. Cylinder six. She may be down a little bit more than others. What is that, 135, 137? Last but not least, cylinder eight. What is that, 140, I guess, yep. And here is Miss Daisy to make her appearance. How you doing, girl? Come here. Hello, Miss Daisy. How you doing? You've been digging with your nose and the dirt and. What have you been doing? You're filthy, girl. What is wrong with you? Say hello, everybody. Say goodbye, everybody. Well, that's not stellar numbers, but I'm just not convinced that this thing is burning that much oil because it does not smoke, you know, like an oil burner. Uh, two or three pats on the gas as soon as I hit the starter, most times she fires right up. It runs, you know, pretty strong for what it is. I just, well, I'm just not convinced that we're burning that much oil. Uh, I burnt two quarts of oil in a week or two, and that's just, well, uh, I don't believe that. Uh, I did, when I was over here, I did find a lot of oil on this dipstick too. It may be blowing it out. I, I don't know. Uh, tell you what we're gonna do for now. I'm gonna put the plugs back in it. We're gonna set this to the side. We're gonna go in the basement there, and we're gonna fill with that four-speed transmission. Alrighty, let's take a look at this transmission I'm gonna be using. It's a 64 to 65. Muncie M20 wide ratio. And I don't <laughs> I don't remember where it came from. It's been sitting on that shelf over there for years and years. Uh, it's been took apart. You can see the orange RTV. I might have done that. I might have put it together out of pieces. I really don't remember. Uh, but what I want to do is you can tell that this cover's leaking. And this uh, front bearing support cover or whatever is leaking too. So I want to take this cover off, inspect everything, and... We'll reseal that and we'll take that off, reseal it too. Also, I've got this shifter. I don't know what it fits, but it ain't gonna work for what we got. And uh, I got this shifter. I believe this is the one we're gonna be able to use. This is probably the one I used on the Saginaw four speed that used to be in the truck. And then here's pieces of one in this box. Anyway, I believe between the three, we can probably come up with a shifter to work. All righty, let us get this cover off. 
hither. I need to get me a, a dead blow hammer. I do not own one. All righty, there, there she is. Let me get the fleece leaked and we'll look at it. Um, you know, it looks pretty good actually, other than, well, <laughs> maybe not. A lot of gold in there from the uh, synchronizers. Hmm. Roll it around. Tell you what we're gonna do. I don't see any gears broke or chipped. Um, synchronizers, they probably are war. Um, but this ain't a race truck and I'm not gonna be, you know, running through the gears real hard. So, I think what I'll do is I'll drain the rest of that grease, clean the bottom out, because it's got some gunk in it, put this cover back on, fix this leak up here, put her in the truck. I just thought I'd show y'all real quick the gears and synchronizers and all that. Uh, it ain't bad. Like I said, there's some gold down there in the bottom. Y'all probably can't see it. Pretty sure it's from these gold synchronizers. I don't know exactly what you call them, but it's got something to do with the synchronizing. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna clean that out down there and we'll, we'll put her in the truck. It ain't like it takes, you know, forever to swap this transmission. You know, you can have it in and out in an hour. You know, it just think much to them. So anyway, let's, let's get her cleaned up, get her in the truck. All right, I got all that grease drained. I'm trying to get all that little gold stuff out of the bottom. Stuffing this rag down in there. Hopefully I can get most of it in the way. Then once I do this, I reckon I'll scrape the cover, get it clean. I'm probably gonna make a gasket for it. And then get that put back on and then fix that leak. And we'll be ready to put this thing in, dude. All right, let's scrape this clean. By the way, this thing got numbers all over it. That's how I figured out what it was. I found a website that tells you, you know, by the side cover and the numbers and the, whether it's patent pending or actually has a patent number. That's how I determined it was 64 to 65 and uh, M20 and a wide ratio. Well, I'll be back when I get this done because. <laughs> It looks like I'm going to fight this. I'll tell y'all what. <laughs> I have never in my life seen a gasket this hard to get off. It just, it just don't want to come off. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in my tank of uh, purple power over there, soak it overnight, and then I'll come back tomorrow and maybe it'll be softened up enough where I can get it off. This is ridiculous. Well, it's the next day. I am fixing to make a gasket for this front bearing housing support thing I'm buying. And let's just show you how I do it. I already got the side cover gasket made. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Anyway, on this one here, I'm gonna take this knife and just, we're gonna run around the outside of it like so. Just like that right there. Just like that right there. Then uh, I take, if this will fit in a hole, I don't think it will. Nope. Let's go to a smaller one. Smaller one. A cheer. That's barely going to tap on it. I get. Well, it didn't make a very good mark. So let's just do that. And then we'll do that. do is you come on here you get your scissors and you cut it out and when I get it cut out I'll be right back all right now that I got that cut out uh, let's go ahead and punch the holes in it 
they probably need to be this bigger size. Where did it go? Here it is, right in front of my face. Right in front of my face. I just get you a piece of wood. This is a a nine piece hollow punch set. I'm sure it's going from Harbor Freight. Just get you a piece of wood, you get it lined up on your holes. Whack, whack. Do that to all the holes. All right, now that I got the holes punched, I want to put this up here. I thought them holes were evenly spaced, but apparently they're not. And get them holes lined up, and then you take the school driver here, and you go around the edge and mark it, just like it, just like it right there. And I'll get this marked. I will cut it out. And then we'll be able to put it on. Let's just do a trial fit with the bolt. Put the bolt in it and we'll see what it does. Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. It you know, needs to be trimmed a little, but I'm not going to because I'm afraid I'll cut too much. I think what we got shall work. So now what I gotta do, get the side cover out of the, uh, what's that called over there? Uh, purple power, clean it up real good. And we'll put this back together. All right, I got the side cover out of the uh, purple power tank over there. And it helped soften that gasket some, but it was still fine. That's the, that's the toughest gasket I believe I've ever come across. Anyway, let us get this put back together. Do what? Let's put us a little bit of grease right there. Y'all hear that cricket? I don't know if y'all hear him or not. He's been going for 30 minutes. He won't shut up. If I find him, I'm probably going to have to kill him. Anyway, let's get this put back together. And then we'll get it on the transmission right there. And if you're fooling with these, you got these little arms here, that's your detent, you know, when you're shifting. So be sure and get uh, the end of your shift fork down in that little detent. Just like that right there. This one here. Pretty sure it's ready to go back on. So let's do that. Well, fellas, I was fixing to put this front bearing retainer housing, whatever you want to call it, on. And the holes, you know, they look like they're watered out. And I just, well, I didn't like the looks of it. And you can't really get a lock washer on there. There just ain't enough, ain't, ain't enough meat left. Well, I went to my stash. Look what I found. I got, <laughs> I got a bunch of these, actually. Uh, but you can just see the difference in the holes. It's <laughs> quite a bit of difference. Uh, I ain't gonna throw it away. I'm gonna keep it. I don't throw stuff away. Y'all know that. But whilst I was out there in my stash, I found another shifter. And there might be more of these in there. I really need to go through that stuff sometime. But anyway, here's us another four-speed shifter. Just in case we need it. Alright, let's get this thing put back together. So we can put it in the old truck out there. I'm gonna put me a little bit of RTMV on either side of that gasket, just because I can. I ain't gonna use a lot. Normally you don't, you know, unless it's really pitted, you don't use a whole lot, just a little bitty bit. These bolts and this side cover, they don't go all the way through, so we ain't gotta worry about them, you know, leaking. But these front cover bolts, they do. So I may put a little something on the threads, you know, just as a precaution. All right, let me put some more on this side. Again, just a very, very light coat, just to help it out. All right, let us get this in here without getting it all over the gasket. Well, this is interesting because it doesn't fit in the hole. How does this work? Okay, here we go. Here we go, I got them in there now. Oh yeah, let's see. 
Maybe not. I don't want to go down. Where's my flashlight? Huh. What in the devil is going on? Well, huh. I don't I don't know what's got it. It does not make any sense. It just there it went. When in doubt, use brute force. All right, let's get the bolts in. Get them tightened down. I'm gonna very lightly tighten these with this gun. So this is aluminum. And well, it strips really easily. Alrighty, well let's put this here on and again I'm gonna lightly run it down with impact because <laughs> these holes in this case, ooh, they ain't looking that good. Uh I'll tell you what we could do right now. Um we could try to get a shifter on it. And get the linkage, you know, close. That way, once we get it in the truck, we just bolt it in and fine tune it a little bit, maybe. I like this here because that three speed, it's it's right here. I don't know if y'all can see there or not. It's right here. The shifter knob hits me right there in the leg. It needs to be scooted over. That uh, that shifter lever, you know, may come in handy. All right, here's the other shifter. It looks a little bit better. It's a lot cleaner. They're both Hearst Competition Plus, but probably gonna use this one, well, because it's cleaner. Uh, and also, remember I told you that the shifter hits me in the leg right here? Well, I forgot about this right here. Daddy made this bracket to offset the shifter handle, and I took it off, I think, because it's such an offset, when you shift it, it would twist, and it wouldn't shift right, it couldn't shift fast, probably, is what it is. Anyway, I took that off, we may put that back on now that I'm older and not as dumb and I, you know, I don't have to take off wide open all the time. Or we may, we may just use this one. We'll just have to see when we uh, get it in the truck. But for now, I'm gonna get this mounted to this transmission and uh, get all this uh, adjusted like I want it. Well, close anyway. We might have to do some fine tuning once we get the shifter handle on it. Let's get this on. All right, let's get this shifter mounted on this here plate. Do it, do it like that. Do it like that right there. There's supposed to be a little pin you stick down in here, line all them up. I have no clue where that's at. So let me find something to stick down in there. All right, all I could find was an nylon wrench to go in there, line all that stuff up. It needs to be a little tighter, but we'll, you know, once we get it on the truck and get the shift in it, then we can go to fine tuning it. But basically all you do, well that one there is pretty much where it needs to be. You just line it up there and put a bolt in it. And that's pretty much it. All right, let's go ahead and put this shifting arm on, get it bolted in. Um, I don't know which way that turns. I'm assuming it's gonna turn the same way as that one. I guess we'll find out here in a minute, won't we? Let me get this bolted on. By the way, when you're doing this, you know, you got your alignment pin over here. Well, you wanna make sure these are in neutral too. All right, I got that in. This. Well, I'll tell you what, we need to take her loose from here, I believe. Don't forget our little bushing that goes in here. This one, I believe, is gonna come from the back. Just like that. Just like that right there. Go ahead and put this clip on it. Then what you wanna do is adjust this until it slips down in there but I got to take this one out. I think I'm doing this backwards, I think. I think you're supposed to start with reverse. 
But anyway, we'll get it in a minute. Let me get this out of the way. Then just bring this over here. Make sure your little bushing's in there so it won't be so sloppy. And as you see, it went right in. Um, then you put this clip on. Anyway, now we gotta do the reverse. All right, we got to run it in some. A little bit more. This there don't look bad. I think we'll put it right there and just see how it does. First, second, third, fourth, and then where is reverse? Do you go over this way or this way? Nope. Well, let me take reverse back off. We're just a wee bit off on reverse. I don't know how that happened. Can I go in reverse now? No, sir. <laughs> I don't get it. Reverse should be all the way over here. I think I just got it right there. Yep. Yep. There is reverse. Like I said, we'll have to probably fine tune this. Anyway, now we got all that working. Um, like I said, we'll have to fine tune it once we get it on the truck. But for now, let's go out there and get the old transmission out of the way. All right, we're under the truck. As you can tell, I hope you can tell anyway. Uh, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna get rid of this driving shaft. And then we'll come up here. Well, I gotta get my, we'll get my shifter uh, lever up there off. Then we gotta take these bolts out to here. You gotta take four bolts out of the transmission and it should just plop right out. So let's get busy doing that. Shifter be gone. All right, let's get this driving shaft out of the way. All right, here we go. Get out of the way, Mr. Drive Shaft. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this trash bag over the end of this transmission. That way, I ain't got to worry about no grease dripping all over me and my cardboard and, well, it's just gonna be a lot cleaner and a lot more pleasant time. Speaking of exhaust pipe, this exhaust pipe is approximately uh, 35 years old, around there. 13, 14 years old, if I'm not mistaken, when we went and got this uh, put on. And yeah, about 35 years old. And it's in pretty doggone good shape. Anyway, let's get this transmission out of here and get that board feed in. I'm getting a little hungry. Trying to decide what I'm gonna eat for lunch. Oh, I got some more up here I didn't know I had. All right, there is the transmission mount plate. All right, let's get these transmission bolts out. You know what? These have nuts on the back side. Uh, I gotta take this cover off here. Dang it. Dang, dang it, dang it. Well, fellas, I might have just found a pretty good oil leak. The rear main seems to be leaking quite a bit. That may be where a lot of our oil is going. I tell you what, I'll be glad when the day comes that we can rebuild the motor in this old truck. Well, it sure does need it, I'm telling you. Hopefully it'll be pretty soon too. Hello, Mr. Clutch. How's life been treating you in there? I'm gonna go ahead and get this transmission mount off and then uh, I'll get that speedometer cable off too. Uh, I gotta get some chanty locks to get that speedometer cable off. The speedometer is approximately 15 mile an hour off. I need to try to fix that sometime. I got 
got to get up here. Oh, you son of a gun. Oh, that hurt my head so bad. Oh, it hurt my head so bad. Oh, oh, my head. I think all we got left is them two top bolts of that transmission. There it is. It's ready to come out. Now this fella here, this little fella here is uh, cast iron. And let me tell you, it ain't light. Not like a, not like an aluminum one. Let's see if we can get her out though. You know what? I believe that shifter's gonna have to come off. Well, that's a little bit aggravating. That's what that is. Oh yeah, we can get her out now. Dirt daubers all in my eyes. You sorry son of the guns. Oh, that hurts. All right. There the little feller is right there. Damn. Let's get her drug out from under here. Get her put on the shelf. All righty, now we got the transmission out of the way. Uh, I gotta get that bell housing off. And I don't think I've ever showed y'all this. But, uh, well, let me show you this first. The motor mounts in the very front, that's like a 55, 6, and 7 Chevrolet car. And then originally all he had was this mount here on the very back of the transmission. Well, he broke a couple of transmission mounts. And he said, well, I got to do something about that. So we found a 69 carry-all, and it had this cross member right here. As you can see, you know, it's got motor mounts on it. Put that in here, and buddy, let me tell you, she's solid as a rock now. I'm not sure if I got to pull that cross member off or not. I do have to jack the motor up and support it. So I got to do that first and then we'll pull this bell housing off. And uh, hopefully we won't have to pull that cross member out. All right, I believe what we'll do first, we'll get these motor mount bolts out of the way. Who put that exhaust right in the way? Bunch of morons. I'm not tired of getting out from under this truck 40,000 times. Let's get this bolt out of here. I'm going to jack that motor up just a touch. And get these off these mounts. Got to climb up under here again. All right. I don't know if a 5 eighths is missing. Send a search party. My 5 eighths is missing. Oh, here it is. I found it. I think I'm just going to start taking bolts out. <laughs> Whatever falls off, falls off. <laughs> There's one bolt. Also, and oh, by the way, this truck left me stranded the other day because this slave cylinder right here leaked all the fluid out. So, I got a new slave cylinder we're gonna put on it too. Well, I think I got all the bolts. Oh, yeah, she's just about falling off. Look at there. Finally, 60 days later, I got that one dead blame bolt loose. I do believe I'm going to have to take that dead blame cross member out. Anyway, yep. <laughs> you sorry, son of a gun. <laughs> I got rocks all in my darn back. I swear. I need to pick a different profession. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Lord have mercy! What is wrong with me? <laughs> oh, man. Let me take these motor mounts out. That might help. It might help. <clears throat> Almost, but no cigar. Well. I just don't want to take a cross me route. I don't know why. I just don't. That's aggravating. I have stepped on a stink bug some kind of way. Because I'm telling you, it sure does stink. 
I'll tell you what, let me try something here. Oh, look at here, look at here. Oh, yeah, get out of here, you sorry son of a gun. That thing ain't got no compression. That's just pitiful right there. All right, I am back from Ireland. Got all my parts that I need. We gotta get this uh, pilot bushing down here cause it's a little bit war. And let me show you how you go about doing that. What you do is you get you some paper towels, toilet paper, bread, I've used it all. You wanna shove it, you wanna get it wet. Shove it in that hole, all that you can get. And then when I get that hole filled up, I'll be back and I'll show you how that's gonna get that pilot bushing out of there. I got that hole, you know, you think it's full. Well, what I normally take is an old lineup shaft. You don't wanna use your new one that you gotta use as a lineup shaft. Take an old one, then you go to shoving it down in that hole, just like that right there. Then you get you some more, get it wet. Shove it on in there, just like that right there. And take your thing, you shove it on in there. Well, when you can't shove no more, I'll show you here in just a minute what you do. Uh, the thing about using bread, it's really soggy. But the good thing about it, <laughs> you can have a snack while you try to get your pilot bushing out. Anyway, what you want to do is get that just plumb full of paper towels, or toilet paper, or bread. Then, take your old lineup shaft, and you go to whooping on it, just like that right there, and you just gotta keep shoving the paper in, and eventually, it's gonna come out. Yeah, we're moving her a little bit more all the time. All right, I went and got a steel punch, because that in there, well, it got to where it was just bouncing. Didn't feel like it was doing much of nothing. So, we're going to use the old steel punch. You know, if I'd have just left this clutch alone, <laughs> I'd be done with this already. It got to where I smelled clutch every time I took off, so I figured I might as well change it. And the old clutch don't look bad. I guess it's just got age on it. There she is, fellas. Finally, got the little fella out. Now let me dig all that uh, paper towels out of there. All right, got all them out. Let's get this other new pilot bushing in here. And then let's get this thing back together. I'm tired of fooling with it. All right, I want it about flush. That's about where it is. All right, let us get this right up in here. Just like that right there. Then we're going to get our pressure plate. Pressure plate! Got a lot of pressure on you. I know it, buddy. I know you can do it though. Get this up in here and then I need a bolt. I gotta have a bolt. Tell you what, I ain't gonna make y'all sit through this. Me putting this all back together. And I'll see you on the other side. I just thought I'd give y'all a mid install update. Everything's going smoothly, except this uh, rod right here that's going through the clutch fork goes back to the slave uh it was too long all of a sudden i think what it is is these fingers on this uh pressure plate uh they these are bent the one that come off of it they're flat i know that's different i had to cut this about an inch off of it everything's going great now uh the next step is to stick the transmission in this hole right here I think we'll get done tonight. Uh, we'll get to drive it, but I believe I'll get it back together tonight before I go home. All right, here comes the fun part, wrestling this thing up in here. Oh, yeah. It is aluminum, but it is still heavy. All right.
Okay, well, now that it's laying on my face. Oh, that hurts. Ow. Get in there. Well, how did I get that other one out? Is what I'd like to know. This ain't gonna go in. Ooh. That cross bear's about to come out. This cross member is going to have to come out. All right. I had to take the cross member out of the way. It just would not go. So now, let's struggle and get this sucker up here. In this hole. Oh, man. I don't know if I got it left in me. That last. Oh, it like to wore me out. I just can't get under it. Let me start the top bolt. That might help guide it in. Yeah. There she went. I believe so. I believe she went. Thank you, Jesus, and heaven above. I tell you what, I'm rolling around on a bunch of broken dirt daubers' nests. <laughs> it's, it's about like rolling around on the rocks. All right, I got the cross member back in and everything bolted up except this plate right here. We see that gap. I can't close it up. It put too much pre upward pressure on that uh, transmission. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these motor mounts here a little bit and that'll let this close up. I'll tighten these up and I'll come back and tighten these up just not as tight. Well, fellas, it's been dark for an hour and a half, but I was determined that I was going to get this transmission in this truck before I went home. Look at there. We got us a four-speed Muncie M20 wide ratio transmission in the old dude truck. I got to clean the tools up. I'm going home because I'm about wore out. Well, it's the next day again. I reckon about all we got left to do is put some gear oil in it and uh, put the shifter handle on it. Uh, I already got my gear oil uh, rigged up in my little pump-up sprayer. This is the most handiest thing you can do. If you got to put grease in the rear end or a transmission, get you a pump-up sprayer. It'll pump, it'll spray it even in the dead of winter because I've done it. <laughs> it's very handy. And anyway, let me tell you about the gear oil. This is ADW90. That ain't as important as the spec. This is a GL4 uh, oil. And what that means is, well, it's got to do with the additives in it. GL5, which is, you know, the next step up, has a lot of phosphorus and sulfur in it for wear additives. You do not want to use GL5 in anything that has what they call yellow metal, which is bronze, brass, copper. The sulfur and phosphorus is corrosive to that type of metal. GL4 doesn't have as much, so that's what you want to run. It usually say on the bottle, whether it's for synchronous or non-synchronous transmissions. You want it for synchronous transmissions if it has synchronizers in it. Anyway, let's get out here and fill this transmission up. All right, I gotta get this plug out of this transmission. Firstly and foremostly, oh my goodness gracious. That was really, really tight. If anybody can give me a good reason why they didn't put drain plugs in these transmissions, well, put it down in the comments because it don't make no sense to me. You got a boss right there, drill a hole, tap it. If I'd have thought about it when I had it off, I'd have done that. I just didn't think about it. All right, I got my pump up sprayer already pumped up. Oh, and you want to take the end off of your pump up sprayer because you don't need it, you know, spraying the pattern. All you want to do is spurt it in there. Let's take a minute, so I'll be right back. Now this pump up sprayer idea, it's not fast. But it's a lot better than trying to squeeze a little one quart bottle into it. You know what? <laughs> I should have looked this transmission over a little bit better because this mount right here, 
Well, she's been welded. Been welded back on, so there ain't no telling what I'm fixing to get into here. Most of the time, they'll break the ears off. I got two or three out there in the barn, and they got the ears broke off. And I got, I think, two. They're the whole case here, main case, with the gears. One of them's locked up, just rusted. The other one, I think the input uh, gear is stripped. Alrighty, I do believe we're full. That took about 16 years, but hey, we finally got there. Let me get the plug. Where'd my plug go? Get the plug in it, and I guess uh, we'll put a shifter. Uh, what do you call it? Shifter lever, shifter arm, shifter handle. Maybe it's a handle. Is it a handle? That's what we'll call it. A shifter handle. Well, this offset handle, it ain't gonna work. It's too wide here. And I took this bolt out, took this bolt out, and still won't come out. I think it goes all the way down here to where this pin goes through. I ain't taking it all apart. So we'll just go back to Old Faithful here, and I'm gonna put this offset bracket on it and just see how it shifts. And if it does good, great. If it don't, well, I'll take the sucker back off. Alrighty, I got the handle on, and I do believe I'm gonna like this shifter a lot. Cause, well, that other one, it was really cheap. It would hang up going from second to third. If you didn't stop and then push it over and then go, it'd hang up. Listen here, watch this. Whoom, pow, whoom, pow, whoom, pow, whoom, pow, ba, 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 ba. Shifts mighty good. There's reverse right there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this shifter. Well, I guess next we need to uh, work on our stop telling turn lights i got these here all i'm gonna do is make a bracket they you know we got bolts make a bracket to where the one is now put this on it put this one on the other side then these ones are going to be blinkers they're going to mount up here about like that they don't look bad they i like these because they just have a retro look to me the reason i'm not making these do all three stop tail and turn is well i'm lazy you got to use uh, two or three different relays. It's it's a little more wiring. I just don't feel like doing it. So I'm just going to mount this right up here on top of here. And I'll run my blinker mechanism right to here. Speaking of blinker mechanisms, here it is right here. Come off the old 51 out there in the barn. Let me sand this down and paint it first so it can be drying. And then we'll start making the brackets for all these. All right, let me show you what I got planned for my tail lights. The old one went here. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, I don't really want it sticking out, you know, back that far. I'd like to have it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a little Z bracket or L bracket, whatever you want to call it. I guess it'll be a Z bracket. Anyway, it's going to come here, back, and here, and the back of the tail light to be right here. I think it'll look pretty good. All right, this is what I'm going to make it out of. What is this, inch and a half? Yes, sir. Uh, anyway. I need a three and a half, a two and a three and a half, and then weld them together in a Z formation. Then you gotta drill a hole for the light, paint them, and there you go. I need a squar. Where is my squar? I found my squar. It's right here. I think the next time I go to Harbor Freight, that I am going to buy me a chop saw. I need one bad sometimes. Just be a lot easier and quicker.
Ta-da! These ones here, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to screw them out to the top and then I'll put some kind of sealer around the bolt holes to keep water out of this and down here. Yep, I think that'll work pretty good. All right, I got to get this here mounted, but I got to bend it to make it straight, you know, because this, this here ain't straight. But when I bend it, it hits, so I got to use some spacers to build it up. And that is going to be these little nuts. So let me get this holes marked firstly, about where I want it. Then I'm gonna pre-drill some uh, pilot holes. And then we'll screw it on. All right, I tell you what, that right there looks pretty doggone good to me. Yup, yup, yup. What y'all think about that? Not bad, not bad at all. All righty, I got the blinky blink module here mounted. There's left, there's right, there's flashers. Running wires now. There's two right there. Just running them out, running them down for now, making sure I have plenty. I'm waiting on my brackets to dry before I put them back on. Once they dry, we'll put them on, wire them up, and we'll be done. All righty, I got my wires run from my turn signals. I thought I'd just go ahead and put my brackets on. Then I gotta run, I gotta extend this. This is stop, that's tail. I gotta extend them over to the other side. Then I think we'll be about done. Pretty close anyway. Let me get this mounted. Also, oh, by the way, I drilled me a hole in the bottom in case rain comes through here. Well, it'll just drain right on out. All right, let me get the other side on. And uh, that's pretty floppy right there. Tell you what I'm gonna probably do eventually, put some small bolts instead of these screws. Well, they probably ain't gonna last a real long time. Anyway, let me, uh, let me get these wires extended over there and get that light on, get it wired up, and I'll be back. Well, there they are. We got brake lights, tail lights, and turn signals now. I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, my wiring, it's a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I may try to find some conduit of some kind sometime, and you'll run from here to here just to pretty that up a little bit. But, well, for now, we'll say it's a rat rod, and, well, that looks good for a rat rod. Uh, got the... Uh, Turn signal blinky blinky thing mounted here. Front front uh, signals, I ain't got none. These um, holders, I don't know what's going on with them. I can't get a good ground half the time. And I don't know how to get the whole assembly out to work on it. So I got to study up on that. Anyway, let me set y'all on the tripod and uh, we'll check them out and see what they look like. All right, here are tail lights. Here are brake lights. Here's the right blinky blink. Here's the left blinky blink. And it has flashes. What do y'all think about that? That don't look too bad if I must say so myself. Now I'll be able to ride this thing around in town. Ain't gotta worry about people running me over or cops pulling me over. Uh, I do need to get the front ones fixed, but We'll worry about that another time. Uh, it's almost dark. I tell you what, let's run it down the road, check that four speed out and see how it does. Well, there's been a change of plans. I completely forgot about my clutch. You know, I put a new slave cylinder on it down there. I never bled it. There's fluid in the uh, master. So let me see if I can bleed it real quick and then maybe we'll head down the road. All right, I think I got it bled good enough where we can go for a ride anyway. So let's do that. The dash light works is the tack and the, and the speedometer. Where they 
this transmission. Yep. Yep. Second gear's gone. That's for sure. Oh, no, I swear. probably can't hear that but when I let off the gas it's a it's a roaring I don't know what it is listen I ain't got a clue what it is Well, I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, when you let off of it in first and second, it's just a terrible, terrible vibration. Uh, and it don't stop till you get back on the gas again. But it don't do it in third and fourth, so I don't really understand what's going on. I thought it might have been the, the little bushing, uh, you know, in the tail shaft. And it, it may be wore out and letting the drive shaft sort of vibrate. Uh, well, I don't know. But it seemed like it would do it in third and fourth, too, so I don't really know. What we might do tomorrow is rig up a camera some kind of way and uh, uh, see if we can't watch that drive shaft, see if it's vibrating. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. This is what you get, though, <laughs> when when you're filling with junk parts. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But I'm going to put you all on a tripod, and I'm going to turn the lights out. Let's just see what our taillights look like at night. Here are the taillights. Here are the brake lights. Here is the left blinky blink. That's pretty bright too. Here is the right blinky blink. Not bad, not bad at all. Well, I reckon we're gonna spend today trying to figure out why this thing is vibrating so bad. I'm gonna get it jacked up so I can get my big fat belly under it. And I'm gonna look and see if I see anything out of place. And May put it on jack stands, put the rear end on jack stands, put it in gear, let it run, and see if it vibrates that way. Maybe I can get up under the truck and see what's vibrating. I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. Well, I'm up under the truck, as you can tell. And as I suspected, this tail shaft bushing right here, she's wore out. Look at that play in that right there. Uh, I'm going to say that's where the vibration is coming from. So let me pull this drive shaft off and... Uh, Pull this seal off and, well, I want to show y'all a little special tool. I don't know if it'll fit this one, but it might. But I'll show y'all a special tool I made for my six-speed on my Trans Am to get this bushing out. All righty, here is the apparatus that I built. Oh, it's been 15 years ago probably. To remove a tail shaft bushing with it still in the vehicle. Um, I did not design this. I found it online, just copied it. Uh, I use this on my Trans Am. It's got six speed in it, and I was having vibration issues with it and thought it was the tail shaft bush. Well, it ended up not being, but anyway, that's what I made this for. All you do, the reason it's, uh, you know, slotted all the way around is so you can squeeze it, stick it in the bushing, and then this piece here, well, it will already be in here, but it'll be back here. Like so, it'll be inside of it. You stick this in the bushing, and then you see these slots here, this one and this one, are bigger. 
Well, that's why I can stick the tip of a screwdriver in there and push this forward to tighten this up on the bushing, you know, swell it out. And then you just run that bolt in against your uh, uh, main shaft and it'll yank that bushing right out. I believe this will fit. And I believe a TH350 transmission bushing is the same as this one. I've got one. Uh, so the only thing I'll have to get is a seal. Hopefully O'Reilly's will have that in stock. So let's get out there and see if this thing will pull that bushing out. All right, let's see if this little contraption will pull this bushing out. All right, I think I'm all the way in now. Now I'll take my school driver and drive that little inner piece that way to tighten up on it. Let's just see what happens. Well, stay on there. Look at there, fellas. Look at there, fellas. We got us one bushing right there. Yes, sir, that thing is good gracious. It is absolutely wore out. All right, well, let me go find the other bushing and uh, we'll drive it in. Well, I don't have a driver for that bushing. I can't use my normal one because, you know, we got a tail shaft sticking out of the way. So, I gotta make one, so y'all gonna see me do a little machining on the lathe. All I gotta do is cut this down to an inch and a half, about an inch back. So let me get the camera set up, we'll do that. Engine 637. About 137 to go. Let me see where we is. We are at engine 550. About 50 more thousand. That is 505. Let me get that bushing and see if it'll fit on it. It almost will. See what? Let me see if I can sand that last 5,000 off. Oh, look at there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that'll work. All right, let's see if we can get this bushing in here. Let me tell y'all something. These are put together. Uh, it looks like a little puzzle piece here. You, you got this little groove for the drain back hole for the oil. Well, you don't want that over that uh, groove. So I'm going to put it on top. And let me see if I can get her drove in straight. I believe, yeah, I believe I'm bottom out there, and get this thing here off of it. Maybe, maybe not. What in the world has happened? Oh, well, this ain't good. No, sir, I don't know what has happened, but that ain't that ain't good. I tell you what it is. I tell you exactly what it is. That bushing is going to squish a little bit when I drive it in, and I should have made this a little bit smaller. Yep, that's exactly what's happened, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can get this off. Tell you what, let me go get the slide hammer stick on it. All right.
There she is, fellas. We got us a brand new bushing. Let me see uh, how the drive shaft feels in it. Oh, yeah. I believe it's much, much better. So now, I got to go to Ireland and get me a seal because I don't have a seal. So I will be back when I get that. I just measured this old bushing with the uh, calipers there. And depending on where you measure it, it had about 50 thousandths wear. That's, that's quite a bit. Uh, it's pretty thin. So hopefully that's the vibration. Let me go get me a seal. Alrighty, I am back from Ireland. And I got me a seal. So let's go ahead and get that put on. And then we can test this thing out. By George, I believe that's it. All right, let me get the drive shaft on. And then we'll uh, get this thing off jack stands. Well, I reckon it's time to get in this thing, head down the road, and see if we succeeded or failed. But before we do that, let me show you everything else I've fixed in the last couple of hours. Watch them lights right there. Oh, yeah. Every one of them works. Got all the gauge lights working. Change the bulbs out for LEDs. That ain't too bad. Well, watch this right here. Oh, yeah. We got front uh, turn signals now. Uh, the grill is so rusted, I couldn't get a ground from it to the rest of the body, so I put me a, a ground strap over here, and that's what we got. See how much faster they're blinking, too? Well, I put a new flasher in it, and that sped it up quite a bit. Anyway, let's get this thing head down the road. Well, I still got an issue with my clutch. Remember I told you, you know, it left me stranded. The slave cylinder basically blew out, and uh, fluid just pours out of it. Well, I put a new slave on it a couple days ago, and thought I had it bled. Well, evidently the master cylinder's bad now because if uh, if I hold the clutch all the way down, I'm fine. But just as soon as I come up just a little bit, it goes away completely and the truck tries to take off. So that tells me the master cylinder's probably got a bad spot in there. And uh, I was going to replace them both at the same time, but I can't, I can't find a master cylinder, can't find a rebuild kit. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, but Let's attempt to take us down the road because I'd like to see if uh, if we fix that vibration. See how it's doing? Well, that that clutch, I just well I can't drive it like it is. As soon as I go let up on the pedal, the the entire clutch goes away. It's just like dumping the clutch basically. <laughs> I can't I can't drive it like that. Uh, let me look online and see, maybe I can find a master cylinder or rebuild kit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. Well, somehow I found a 59 Ford F100 clutch master cylinder locally. And by locally, I mean it's about 45 minutes away. I just got back from getting it. I was gonna bench blade it, but well, it didn't come with any fittings and I don't have any. So I'm just gonna put it on the truck and cross my fingers that it'll bleed itself somehow. Let's get this on the truck. Also, I know by the way, I wonder what's in this bag right here. Looks like a freshly turned crankshaft. Wonder what that fits. There's a brand spanking new clutch master cylinder right there. And it miraculously bled itself. Don't ask me how. I just worked the pedal up and down a bunch and <laughs> all I know is I got full pedal now. Looks like we're gonna go for a night ride. Let's just hope. We can at least make it out the driveway. All right, here's another cold start.
power steering on this thing. Well, <laughs> that didn't go as planned. I ain't no transmission expert, and I ain't got a clue what's wrong with it. I really hoped that bushing was gonna fix it. Well, it didn't. Uh, it's kind of weird that it only does it in first and second when you're letting off the gas. Um, it does grind a little bit going into fourth, and I think when you're downshifting into second, maybe. I don't know if bad synchronizers can uh, cause a vibration like that or not. I'm gonna have to do a little research on it. But it's looking like there's going to be a part two. I'm going to put a transmission out and rebuild it because I ain't leaving it like that. But at least we got some good tail lights, turn signals, um, got the clutch pedal fixed finally. So what a complete fail. As far as the old motor goes, well, she's wore out. It's hard for me to believe that, though. As easy as it starts, as good as it runs, it don't even smoke. Where's the oil going? I don't know. Uh, she'll have to stay that way until I get time and money to rebuild it, though. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind hit like comment subscribe share it with your friends and i've got a post office box now if you just want to send me junk don't send me no crazy stuff check out my merch there'll be a link down there too and until next time go do something blurp blurp